met at a record store, a local record store, you know, and uh, we just started talking about music, and I was trying to see what he, you know, what he knew, and he was quizzing me, and I was surprised that he knew, you know, what he knew about music, because he was, like, much younger than me, you know, but it, it turns out he knew quite a bit, you know, and I surely realized that uh, he wasn't no clown. So I was kind of surprised that he knew what he knew, and that's what gravitated me towards him in the first place. And then we eventually started hooking up. Comparing and, tapes. And comparing tapes and music and this, that, and other. And, uh, you know, I beat him out a few deals, he beat me out a few deals, and we decided, well, since we was both so good at it and so into the music, why don't we just do it together as a team? And that's where it started. A lot of the collective we did came from hard times, just trying to live. Trying to have a little fun. Trying to enjoy ourselves, a hobby that turned into a... You know, a, uh, an obsession, you know, but uh, that's what we did. We collected the best stuff. Uh, we sold everything. It's a lot of stuff that we just sold that we didn't like. You know, everybody got different tastes, but we sold all kinds of stuff. Disco, to soul, to rock, to calypso. Okay. We didn't like it, we got rid of it. You know, we liked it, we kept it. The electro stuff, we kept everything. Down tempo stuff, we kept everything. Lots of disco. So much that I can't even remember. I mean, it was just so, we had so much disco, so many different labels, it was insane. It was crazy. We basically did private parties. Um, you know, we did some receptions, stuff like that, you know, uh, but we had most of our fun at the private parties because we was able to get out. And for the kind of people that we planned for, it was really, you know, it was just right up our alley, you know. It was anything and everything that we wanted to play, and we knew how to play it. And they really liked it, and so we consistently did private parties. And a lot of people that's on the mainstream don't know about that, but we did a lot of parties. We rocked a lot of heads. We served. We got out there. And if we asked to do it, we still do it here in Chicago. It is where we pretty much have racks coming all the way down, all the way down, all the way through that. We way. had shit along this wall. All, all the whole perimeter of the station. Uh, the party room is down to the right, the computer room is But basically here, this room at one point was a computer room. A lot of time when we got collections in, cause we, would, we would see people here, so this is the music room. This is the room where we played the music, where we turned people off to the cuts, and this is where we, we would take trips, sometime to the other coast. Uh, to go find stuff, you know, we hit New York, we hit Philly, Detroit, go down south, go out west, Arizona, Vegas, you know, you name it, we was there. And we bought all that stuff back then in order to uh, distribute it to the, you know, the, the different uh, channels as far as to keep money coming in so we can keep making trips. The focus of the uh, Real Sound of Chicago compilation it's pretty much a collaboration of dance floor genre music, artists or bands. Pretty much from the years of maybe <clears throat> 1976 to like maybe 1983, 84. A lot of these bands had low budgets. They had very little marketing, very little promotions. Uh, if anything, they just couldn't get this stuff through the door and into the mass marketplace. And as far as we're concerned, the music uh, is either of equal or above status as far as what people call good music. In the scene in Chicago today, the nightlife scene, the dance scene, it's all, you know, very typical. But it, it wasn't always. We used to be innovators for a long time, you know. We had the best DJs in the world, believe it or not. Anywhere around in the world you ask, they'll tell you the same thing. You know, um, just too many to name. I mean, not just the name brand ones. There was lots of, you know, no name brand DJs from the north side, you know, west side, south side, east side. Yeah, everyone just truly had their best. own style. Yeah. For real. You know? Chicago was the town. It was dirty and grimy. The music was new. The music was hot too, boy. It was it was hot. We didn't have many good big clubs like New York, but we had enough, and uh, we had a hell of a movement. One of the highlight tracks on the 
the real the real sound of Chicago compilation is pretty much this acetate here. It's probably the only it is indeed the only copy in the world. I got with the band member that had it pressed up before it was actually pressed for some odd reason and the uh, original master tapes were destroyed. So this is pretty much a four track EP. It's acetate only, it's the only copy in the world. It has some modern on there, some disco funk, some soul.